Scott Pilgrim Takes Off one of the newest animated series on Netflix, and a series that was greatly anticipated by both casual enjoyers and hardcore fans of the Scott Pilgrim franchise. For me, I count myself as a casual enjoyer. Like, I knew about the comic, and I saw the movie back in the day, which I thought was delightful. But for Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, I've discovered that the series has soured some folks in the Pilgrim fandom. No, not that fandom. That one. Some of them feel betrayed, or at least disappointed, that they didn't get a direct adaptation from the comics. That the comic always felt like it was meant to be adapted into animation. But that wasn't 100% the case here. Whatever. Now, I have a friend who's a Scott Pilgrim comic fan, who said that they wish they never read the comics before watching the anime, because they couldn't help but make comparisons that they wanted to enjoy it for what it was without that looming shadow of disappointment hanging over them. They also said that they realized that to complain about an adaptation going in a new direction in a day and age where we constantly get remakes and regurgitations of the same properties over and over again, that they should be happy that Scott Pilgrim went in a new direction, that having your expectations defied isn't a bad thing, and that it's cool that the show did that with its story. Wallace Wells! <laughs> you broke my boyfriend! Prepare to die! Then you got me, where I was excited to really get to know this universe all over again, only to discover that it was going off course. But I was like, well, I expected a cake, but oh boy, another cake. I love cake. I like how the anime series focuses a lot more on Ramona as a character. That was refreshing and makes her far more sympathetic than her portrayal in the movie. I like how we get to see her find closure with all of the exes, and that they all seem to be friends with each other at the end. It was also cool to see them all get more fleshed out and go through their own character arcs, with like the exception of Gideon, who was pretty despicable in the original story, but in this version, he's just sort of pitiful. I've lost everything. My empire is gone. My billionaire friends have shunned me. Even my millionaire friends have turned their backs. Also, also, I like that it feels more modern in terms of themes, which makes sense since the story originally was published in 2004, nearly two decades ago. God, I'm old. Now, as far as criticism goes for the anime series, I found the pacing kind of sluggish at times, especially around the middle part. But the last two episodes pick up and had me a lot more intrigued. It was kind of neat to have seen future Scott and the path he went down. And yeah, I would be interested in a second season. Also, future Fusion Ramona has such an awesome design. Super Ramona! It's just like Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. 3! Did I mean 3? But again, I am super excited at the idea of another season, which the conclusion alluded to. It makes me wonder what else they could explore. But considering how off the beaten path this series was compared to the original story, I don't think I'll have any trouble continuing onward into uncharted storytelling. Oh! And I like how they brought back all the voice actors from the movie as well. That was neat. A rare moment where the live action characters are also good voices too, so it makes sense to bring them back into the anime series. You know Sonic the Hedgehog? You probably know this, but in the early 90s, there were two different Sonic cartoons airing at the same time. Now, let's talk about the animation. The animation is the best part of the whole show, hands down. The camera angles are always so dynamic, constantly utilizing three-point perspective. It makes the show feel so alive and immersive. And it's clear that the artists were using really advanced techniques. Even when the characters are just like standing around and talking to each other, the staging is so interesting to look at. A far cry from your standard flat staging. Also, the art style is fantastic. It adapts the comic style and polishes it really well. I love the textured, bold lines around the characters. It was a really appealing blend between 2D and 3D as well. Like, it really makes me excited to see this continued march between the marriage and utilization of 2D and 3D and the current animation landscape. On top of that, I love the atmosphere, especially with the settings. There are some excellent backgrounds, along with top-notch colors and really cool compositing, especially the blurry effects. Oh, and the action scenes. So good. You better believe they're over the top but that just makes them so much more fun. It reminds me a lot of Studio Trigger action scenes in a way. I personally love the skateboard sequences in the Lucas Lee episode, along with the use of United States of whatever. Good pairing of the music with the visuals. Good job.
So overall, I really enjoyed this adaptation of Scott Pilgrim. It droops with talent, innovation, and effort. Yeah, there are some pacing issues, but they are forgivable. And the rest of the show eclipses any complaints I have. Folks, I highly recommend this series. But hey, what did you think? Let me know what you all think down in the comments, and I'll see you all next time. <sighs> I want to give a shout out to this video sponsor, Vessi. Guys, my shoe collection is almost all exclusively Vessi. I got the Boardwalk slip-ons, I got the Weekend sneakers, I got the Soho sneakers, and I'm rocking the Ulta high tops too. Yes, I have a problem, but at least it's a stylish and comfortable one. For those who don't know, Vessi makes awesome shoes that are waterproof. That's right, you never have to avoid puddles ever again. These shoes are very durable. Take them on a hike, take them on a plane. Hell, take them out of a plane. Yeah, look, that's me. A skydiving while wearing my Vessies. As of late, I've been loving the Ulta high tops. Guys, look how stylish they are. Look at the texture. It has a synthetic leather exterior that looks sleek yet casual. And a padded collar that provides extra comfort to my ankles. Plus, just like the other Vessi shoes, the Ulta high top rocks Dymatex technology which means your shoe is breathable yet waterproof too. Also, Vessi launched their own waterproof gloves. They're stretchy, insulated with a warm lining, and 100% super waterproof. Whatever the day throws at you, you'll be warm and dry no matter what. So I highly recommend Vessi's. They're my go-to shoes by the door. And now even gloves too. Hit up the description down below and go to Vessi.com slash Saberspark to get 15% off your order. Go hit them up today.